So, uh, many people don't know, but uh, it's uh, LSP, uh, it's a vendor manager who is your representative. So, it's a person who uh, is responsible for, for um, maintaining the cooperation with, with translator. And it, this position can be named in a various way. Um, so, these are the names of the position which actually mean something the same, maybe not the same, but very similar. So vendor manager, talent manager, etc. So uh, this is a person who establishes the cooperation with translators and also um, takes care of them later on. And uh, if you have any problems uh, regarding the whole cooperation, this is the person you should talk to. So vendor manager's responsibilities um, are um, usually like that. So this is your first point of contact. I mean, uh, the, this person is an owner of the relationship. So uh, this person is responsible for you and this person should uh, make you happy. <laughs> so if you are a good translator, if, um, if the company is uh, satisfied with the cooperation, the company should do um, all they can just to uh, make you happy, to, to the, just so you would like to cooperate with them. So um, it's also important for them, not only for, for the translator. This person should train you uh, in everything what is going on in the company, in um, the processes, in uh, what is expected from, from you, uh, in maybe tools they are using. Sometimes there are very uh, different tools in the companies. Uh, so, um, so this person does that. Also quality monitoring. So uh, if vendor manager takes care of a uh, certain, let's say, language combination, this person should know uh, what is going on um, in that combination and uh, which translators uh, are better, which worse, uh, how many projects they get. So, so, so this person should have um, a general overview on how, how it works uh, uh, at the company. And if, for example, if there are not enough translators in certain areas, certain language combinations, this person just starts looking for new ones, for example. The troubleshooting, this person helps you in, <coughs> in problems. Um, solving problems related to payments, it actually happens sometimes that, I don't know, your invoice wasn't paid, um, there is a delay, something like that, so you should just ask vendor manager to, to check what is going on. Analysis, uh, it means that um, actually uh, vendor manager also prepares various reports for the company, uh, so um, it actually reports related to, to, to languages, to, uh, to translators, to how, they, how much they, they get from the company, what kind of rates they, they have, such kind of analysis. And business review, uh, it's a kind of um, summary of the cooperation. Uh, so once a year, once a quarter, uh, vendor managers make appointments with uh, translator just to talk about the cooperation and, and uh, decide just to discuss maybe quality issues, maybe uh, the projects, um, so everything that is going on uh, in the cooperation. Uh, on a daily basis, you are usually contacted by project manager. So uh, it's a project manager who checks your availability or maybe some, uh, some assistant, someone who, uh, who works directly with projects. Mm, so this person checks if you would uh, undertake the project. Uh, and uh, this person sends you project orders, so information um, about what is expected, uh, the starting date, uh, uh, deadline, um, how much it is to be translated, <coughs> what kind of language combination it is, everything about that. Uh, this person delivers the files. Um, this person uh, is actually responsible for answering all the questions related to projects. So if you have specific questions about this project, it's project manager who, whom you should contact. Um, and this person solves all the problems which appear during, during um, that pro project. This person uh, can also ask questions to the client. So, um, so don't be afraid of asking such kind of questions. This person can help you and if there is a need, uh, the client can be asked. And post delivery service. So it also happens that after the project is delivered, um, you are asked to do something else, like for example to uh, correct some things or um, maybe something, something changed uh, in the instructions, <coughs> you are contacted again. So, like that. Um, so when it comes to uh, the cooperation, um, you set up the cooperation with the client and what happens next. So um, you start, uh, you are doing the first project and please remember that you can always ask questions. 
sometimes uh, people think that um, if they ask questions, it means that they don't know something and they don't want to show that they, they aren't uh, that independent, or that they don't have the necessary knowledge. But it's actually better to ask good questions, and actually a uh, good question can even um, make better impression rather than not asking about anything. So don't be afraid of that. So first project must be flawless, because um, uh, actually it would give you a kind of, um, um, the company would uh, associate you with that first project. So if there are any mistakes, uh, they, would, uh, they would remember that. If you are delayed, uh, they would think about you about, uh, as, uh, as a person who usually delays, even if it was just one time. So um, first project is really crucial, uh, so first impression just counts. It, it's, it's obvious, but it's true, please remember about that and it builds your, your reputation in the company. Um, of course, um, and you should pay special, uh, special attention uh, to that first project. So, but actually, it should, be, it should be said about every project you deliver, uh, but you should, um, you should focus on the first project as a, as a kind of start, um, and, and about, you, should, you should think about it as, um, as a, an extra effort to, uh, to, to, to get um, there, to get the, the necessary reputation so you could be um, used for other projects. And um, when it comes to the cooperation, it's all about the quality. So, um, so the company expects from you the best quality, but what quality means? Actually, uh, there are different, <laughs> uh, different um, definitions of quality, but usually uh, it means something what clients expect from you. And, um, you don't have to agree on that. I, I mean, agree with that, but uh, you should just deliver what, what they want. See? So usually at uh, translation localization companies, there is a position of quality manager. It can, it can be different, but usually this person takes care of uh, quality issues. Uh, this person um, makes sure that, make sure that everything is, uh, is correct, that, that the projects are running smoothly. Um, and uh, usually the companies use quality tools like Axis Expansion Cure Distiller. Uh, the, these are helping to keep the best quality. The quality system is also something which uh, what uh, the companies have just in order to, uh, to keep the quality at the highest level. And ISO certification is something what, what usually means that the, these companies who, um, who are certified have certain quality system. Mm. Something. So something is a way of uh, keeping the quality on a certain level. So the companies just uh, pick up some text from the projects and uh, and check uh, that little part of the text, not just checking the whole uh, the whole thing because it would take too much time. So uh, you could be asked to correct, for example, um, many things uh, just not only from the sample but in the whole projects based on on that little sample. So if the company notices that, that you, don't, you use wrong terminology, you will be asked to change the terminology in, uh, in the whole project, not, not only in the part which was checked. Uh, so problems in cooperation, in cooperation from translator's per perspective. So these are the most popular, I think. Uh, so long term terms. Sometimes they are even like three months from the moment you <laughs> You deliver the projects, but um, the companies also have, need to wait for the payment from their clients. So this is like this takes time, and then they have to prepare the payments for the translators. So actually, this is something which is quite a pain for translators. Uh, ways of payment nowadays <coughs> it's much better than it used to be. So wire transfer everywhere, um, money bookers, uh, PayPal. Um, in the past, the companies used also checks. Uh, so uh, nowadays it's, it's, I, I say that, uh, that it's better, but, uh, but still uh, there could be, could be problems with that in, in various countries. Short deadlines, so yeah. So sometimes <laughs> translators think that clients believe that they are just sitting and waiting for projects, but it's not true because they have uh, some assignments ready, um, uh, waiting for, you, for them uh, already. Uh, but if you have good clients, uh, you should just find time uh, for them even, for, even if the deadline is quite short. And, very often the companies don't have um, the possibility to, to negotiate the deadlines because in the, the translation, the localization part is just, just a part of uh, launching the product. So the, they, they just need to stick to um, the whole process. So 
very often you can ask uh, to extend the deadline. Very often the, the project managers, for example, set the deadlines um, like for uh, earlier than, than uh, they should uh, deliver the project to the client. So they still have some flexibility, but but it doesn't mean that they would like give you twice time as uh, as you would like to. Unfortunately, uh, lack of reference material. So if you don't give, don't receive <coughs> reference material, um, you don't know how to translate certain things. But if you be, receive uh, too much reference material, it is also um, uh, it could be also di difficult because you would have to read everything. It takes time. You are not paid for for reading reference material. So, so the companies should probably find a kind of golden mean between um, two things and, and give you as much information as, as needed, but not too much because you would be distracted anyway. Um, quality system. So uh, the translators very often don't like quality system because it means that, for example, they have to fill in various questionnaires about uh, what was wrong or how to, um, what kind of um, uh, steps they could uh, take to, to, um, to get better, to, to improve, um, uh, and discussions about details. So, for example, uh, the translator can get the information that that was wrong in the project, and he says, look, but it is, it is right, that person is wrong. And then the discussion, discussion starts about uh, who is right, who is wrong, and it can take ages, and nobody knows what is actually right, the right, right translation of some certain term. term. So this is some, a kind of problem which, which, uh, which happens during the cooperation very often. And escalation, so, um, so sometimes um, translators feel that, that they were uh, punished um, too, too, too much, let's say, um, by companies for certain mistakes, certain errors, uh, which are not very uh, important, like extra space, for example, but um, it also depends on the company. And too many tools. So very often the, the translators are asked to, to use new tools. They have to learn how to use them. Uh, many translators are still not that um, technically oriented, so it can be problematic. So, so these problems sometimes occur during the cooperation. And when it comes to clients, um, clients' perspective, so availability. So good translators are often very busy. So um, if uh, the client contacts a translator, he would like him to be ready to, to do the translation just straight away. And it is impossible very, very often. Uh, but as I said, if you have a good client, you should find time for, uh, for that client. And um, uh, you should pro probably have a few clients. Uh, and uh, mm, so not, I would actually have it on another slide. Re relying on uh, one client only is not something which is good, but uh, still having quite a few um, good clients uh, is the best way to, to, uh, to keep yourself on a, um, on a level that they <coughs> would receive, still receive some assignments, but not too much, not too little. Um, so availability. So this is a problem from the client's perspective. Uh, insufficient communication during projects. So uh, nowadays we have smartphones, uh, every, uh, internet is everywhere, so it is easy to, to communicate with each other. Um, so, so it is really expected from, from translators, from, uh, from freelance suppliers to be uh, accessible during business hours, maybe even sometimes after business hours. So, um, so, uh, so please just remember to check your emails, to, to answer the questions, because sometimes um, it is just about mm, letting them know that, that you exist, you, s you are still there, you are working on that project and they, they don't have to worry that you disappeared or uh, something is wrong. Uh, meeting deadlines, of course, very <laughs> often it happens that, that, that translators deliver projects uh, after the deadline. So, so this is a problem which, uh, which is uh, uh, kind of problem from, trans from uh, agency's per perspective. Quality issues, of course, uh, technical challenges. So we usually call it Tradosh crash syndrome at my previous company because it meant that, for example, someone was asked to deliver the translation in a certain tool like Trados. Uh, so, so this person was supposed to use Trados, and then this person delivered the, the translation in Word and said, oh, I'm sorry, but my, my, my Trados crashed. And, and what, what could we have done? <laughs> Actually, just, help, just ask for help localization engineers, but, but um, technical challenges uh, also um, can, 
can be difficult in the cooperation. So, um, so, uh, so the ideas is actually expect <coughs> translators to be um, oriented in tools and know how to use them. And some, some of them just maybe not lie about that, but they are too um, optimistic about the, their skills uh, in the tools. Um, flexibility, of course. So sometimes. Um, Actually, flexibility means many things. Like, for example, clients can ask you to translate one word, or um, um, I don't know, maybe work during uh, the evening, or sometimes do something in in the, uh, in the weekend. Uh, so, uh, so if you do that, it is really worth it. Perceived by the comfort. Um, what else? Uh, so, typical mis mistakes. So, not using my reference material. So, this is important. Uh, not asking questions <coughs> it was mentioned already, not reading the translation after it is completed. Oh, actually, it is obvious, but um, it very often happens that translators don't have time to read everything after it, the translation is done, but it is very important because very simple mistakes can be spotted um, just by reading it, reading the text afterwards. Um, underestimating part of the errors, so, so the errors can, can really, little errors can spoil even the best translation. So. Um, so translators should know that simply. Uh, undertaking too many assignments, so many translators actually um, take too many assignments because they don't, don't want to say no to clients because they think that if they do that, uh, the clients wouldn't come back with another project. But it's a common mistake because they, then they, they don't have time to do everything properly, they uh, miss the deadlines, and, um, and it's a difficult situation. Um, so. Uh, being dependent on one client only, I also mentioned that. So, so <coughs> the, the best situation is when the person has quite few clients, not too many. Uh, so, the clients who deliver, who give the translators projects for for like weeks or something, um, are the best. But uh, it is good to have some other clients just um, uh, for the backup, uh, just to to uh, to to have uh, another staff to work on, just to keep your... Um, just, it is just helpful also to work on other, other texts so you could stay fresh with, with other topics. So um, maybe that's obvious also. Um, and how to maintain the cooperation and uh, get more assignments. So uh, by being in touch with vendor management and project management, I mean that sometimes uh, you could, for example, um, write to them or call them and ask, oh, do you have maybe some projects for me? Uh, it wouldn't be uh, a problem just to say no, but, but you could get some projects in such situations. They would uh, actually um, remember you for the future situations, even they, if they don't have projects at the moment. So um, it would mean also that you care about that client and, um, and yeah, I would strongly recommend that. Let them know you care about the quality. So, for example, you could deliver extra feedback about something you are dealing with. Um, you could uh, maybe, um, I don't know, maybe use some, some quality tools just on your own, uh, even if you are not asked for that. Um, show your own initiati initiative. For example, you could, um, you could maybe um, suggest that you would prepare some extra material for them, like terminology list or um, some some documents which could be uh, used by them in, in future projects. So uh, in that way, the clients would see that you um, you really care about what you are doing and you care about um, about them. So so they could uh, see that 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 you uh, you are helping them with with some stuff and um, and also be polite and helpful. It is also obvious, but people don't remember about that on a daily basis. So um, even saying hello, how we are doing, um, it, is, it is something which, which makes the client thinking, uh, makes the client think that, that you, you, you are someone who is uh, easy to cooperate with, that you are um, someone they would like to stay in touch with, so, um, so yeah, just, just that. Um, positive feedback I always wanted, so uh, sometimes some information can, cannot be necessary, like uh, like for example, uh, saying that everything was okay, that you liked, for example, the way you they, they cooperated with you. But if you say so, um, it gives some some uh, some positive impression and um, and just helps you to, to keep the good cooperation. Also, remember about business greetings. You could 
tell them, for example, to send them some, some season's greetings, some New Year's wishes, some maybe birthday wishes. <laughs> uh, actually, it is something very small, but it will be uh, something nice to them. Um, and visit your clients. So, for example, if you have clients from some other uh, locations, so if you are, for example, working with a company in Krakow, if you are in Krakow, just <coughs> Just go there and, and say hi, it's me, uh, it's nice to see you. So, yeah, really, it works. <laughs> so, future for translators. So, what you should do to, to be actually on the top, be up to date with technology. So, it actually changes uh, rapidly. So, uh, knowing what is going on on, on the technology market is, uh, is quite uh, important. Um, when it comes to tools, various tools used in the industry, but also in general uh, technology. So, um, so technology is nowadays very uh, is present in uh, in that business. So, so yes, uh, just just remember about that. Be up to date with the news on the market. So, for example, multilingual magazine is kind of me medium, which is uh, which is helpful to, to be up to date. Uh, you should you should aware, be aware of what is going on in the market uh, in terms of which companies are, uh, are counting um, at the moment, which, which are uh, the strongest ones. Uh, it would help you also to find, uh, find out which, which could be the, uh, your best clients. Participate in conferences. So there are some conferences um, uh, in, the, in, in that market, like localization world, maybe, maybe the conferences organized by, by pros.com. Uh, it is also good for freelance translators. They would um, actually, uh, they would, it would help them to find clients and also to, um, to stay in touch with other translators, which is important to, to, to be up to date with, <coughs> with what others do. Um, and uh, networking, so this is also something, um, something about that. So, uh, so stay in touch with others. Um, it would help you to, um, to broaden your knowledge, to stay fresh, and uh, it, would, it would give you also other business contacts. And training, so if there are any, any courses, any trainings you could participate in, just do it because everything changes in the world. So um, this is not only for the CV, this is also for yourself, um, just uh, you can benefit from that. So that's all.